he and his associates had deliberated for an entire five minutes before returning to issue their judgment of 12 years hard labor in one of North Korea's notorious labor camps. I remember the interpreter interpreting for the judge who shouted, no forgiveness, no appeal. I had to hold on to the podium to keep from falling over. I still get chills just thinking about that moment. What many people may not realize is that our sentence was broken down into two parts, two years and 10 years, and that the majority of the sentence, 10 years, was given not for stepping across a river, but for doing our work as journalists. The North Korean government is perhaps the most paranoid regime in the world, and so anything that deviates from this very perfect image it has built for itself is seen as a threat. The fact that we had been interviewing North Koreans who had critical things to say about their government meant that we had hostile intentions. My experience being held in the so-called hermit kingdom is, is filled with terrifying moments from being physically beaten and dragged into that country to being interrogated and threatened day after day to even being accused of trying to bring down the North Korean government. But I want to take a moment and share with you some of the glimmers of compassion and humanity that I also experienced. One day, one of my guards had gone home to see her family. And when she returned, I asked if she had a nice time visiting with them. And she looked down, a little bit forlorn, and she said, I did, but I felt badly that I could see my family when you've been separated from yours for so long. Another one of my guards, after learning that I had been sentenced to 12 years hard labor, seemed genuinely shocked and saddened for me. I was huddled up in a ball, crying uncontrollably in a corner, and she came up to me and she said something that I will never forget. Laura, she said, always have hope. These are young women who were cold and mean and intimidating to me when I first met them. They looked at me as their enemy. And I looked at them as perfect models of North Korean leader Kim Jong-il's mass propaganda machine. They were always quick to spew anti-U.S. rhetoric, and they spoke about their leader as if he were a god. But I mention these moments because I do think that they're a testament to what can happen when people from, quote, enemy nations get a chance to interact and communicate with one another. Our perceptions of one another can grow and widen. If we only take the chance to engage with those we consider different, we might find how much we actually have.